This is me, and this is me and my beautiful red Jofa trying to dangle through two players while using my wrong hand. Before I tell you why I'm trying to become the world's first ambidextrous hockey player, I need to rewind to when I was a kid. Growing up, I was always amazed by the players with the softest hands. I idolized players like Pavel Bure, Doug Gilmore, and later Pavel Datsuk and how they made it look so easy. I always wanted to have buttery hands, but here's the thing. As a kid, I feel like you don't really understand what it takes to master something. Think about it. These NHL superstars probably spent hours and hours each week perfecting their craft. And here I thought I would magically become a good stick handler through my youth hockey practices, or I just wasn't born with the gift of silky mitts. I didn't realize that I should have been dedicating more time to work on my stick handling if I truly wanted to be amongst the best in my age group. As it turned out, I grew up an average stick handler who often played hot potato with the puck. But then fast forward to about five years ago, I started messing around with stick handling at home a few times a week and my puck handling skills improved quickly. It wasn't long before I could confidently say I went from a mid stick handler to having pretty good hands. The drills I was doing weren't anything complex, I used no fancy equipment and I was only stick handling for about 10 or 15 minutes a couple of times per week. It was at this point I realized any hockey player looking to improve their skills should be dedicating at least a little time to working on their puck handling from home. Shortly after, in 2020, I launched the Hockey Training TV app with stick handling sessions that players could follow from their screens to improve their skills. Over the last two years, the app has become top rated in the sports training category. I've fallen in love with creating these stick handling sessions and enjoy helping out players worldwide who might not have access to on-ice personal skills coaches or who just want to work on their skills from home. After seeing the impact I've had on players, I have made it my goal to become the world's best stick handling coach. You might be thinking, but Coach Kev, how can you be the best coach if you aren't even remotely close to the best stick handler yourself. The truth is this, the people who are the best at something are rarely the best at coaching that skill. Think about it. It's why the greatest athletes of all time don't always excel as a coach. They often don't really know how they got to where they are. This is where I think I have a good advantage. My personal transformation with my stick handling over the last few years has taught me a lot and helped me become a better teacher. I have a wide variety of drills and I know what it takes to level up. But here's the thing, I realized if I wanted to have the biggest impact on players around the globe for all age ranges and skill levels, I would need to remember what it's like to be a beginner. Then a light bulb went off. If I could learn how to stick handle with my wrong hand, I would really understand the basics of stick handling and teach even better. So I picked up a right-handed stick from the store and to make it more fun for myself, I created a 14 day challenge where I would force myself to play with my wrong hand in a pickup game at the end of the two weeks. On the left, you can see me trying out my wrong hand for the first time. And on the right, you can see the improvements I've made over the two weeks by following my Mastering the Basics stick handling class on the app. Throughout this challenge, I discovered some big takeaways that will translate into my coaching. I'll share those with you in a second, but first, let's see how I did on the ice with my wrong hand. Tomorrow is the big day. I'm gonna be bringing the video camera out to a pickup game where I'm gonna play with my wrong hand. I'm not gonna lie, I actually had a dream last night where I was toe dragging my buddies. I'll be happy if I can just make a couple passes out there, but we'll see how it goes. Let's go. So I'll be rocking this red Jofa bucket on the ice so the videographer can spot me easily and just because it's nasty. This is what it's like to play hockey in Canada. <laughs> oh, boy. I'm done. So after about 20 minutes there, I called it quits with my wrong hand and switched back to my regular left-handed stick. And even though it felt extremely awkward on the ice, I was happy that I could at least make a few plays, considering I couldn't even stick handle right-handed when the challenge started. Three major takeaways I came away with were, number one, top hand strength is key. I talk about this in my stick handling sessions, but trying to stick handle with my wrong hand really showed me how hard it is to control the puck smoothly if you don't use your top hand to control the puck. I felt very weak with my top hand on day one, and it showed. There was a cool feature by TSN on Connor Bedard that really hit on this point. His dad talked about how Bedard had to stick handle with only his top hand for nearly 12 weeks due to a broken wrist. When he healed up and returned to play, he noticed a major improvement from the increase in top hand strength. 
To figure out if you need to improve your top hand strength, there's an easy test. Try doing your stick handling drills with only your top hand on the stick. You'll likely need some work if you can't perform them at a slightly slower speed or your forearms start to tire out pretty quick. And the easiest way to work on this is simply performing stick handling drills with your bottom hand behind your back. I've got a full 10 minute follow along stick handling session on the Hockey Training TV app if you need some help. Another takeaway was how much you could improve on something if you get into the habit of working on it daily. On day one, there was no way I could have even handled a puck on the ice, but after working on it for just 10 minutes nearly every day for two weeks, I felt way more comfortable and even managed to make a few plays on the ice. If you have a part of your game you want to improve, try working on it daily, even if it's just for 10 minutes. My last and biggest takeaway was how much your stick handling comfort level affects your ability to slow things down on the ice and read the play. When you aren't 100% comfortable stick handling, a large percentage of your brain's processing capacity is thinking about what to do with the puck. This makes it hard to read the ice and make plays. If stick handling is second nature to you, your brain can use that processing power to scan the ice and come up with the best options. I often have parents asking why their kids seem to panic when they get the puck on their stick, which often comes down to not being comfortable enough with their stick handling under pressure. So if you find yourself panicking and getting rid of the puck quicker than a live grenade anytime you get it on your stick, it'd be beneficial to put extra work into your stick handling from home. This will give you more confidence and significantly improve your play. Now, even though I guess I can probably call myself the world's first ambidextrous hockey player, I can also call myself the world's worst and likely will only be doing stick handling with my wrong hand when I'm creating drills and looking for some teaching points. Or I guess if I really want to stick it to the other team. Woo!